Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, uh, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. The topic of the day is the Kingdom of Heaven. Let's just for the moment, um, we bring our attention inwards and uh, simply um, we're going to do a meditation as we normally do at the beginning of the academy. And the meditation is going to be simple. Um, for those of you who are here with me for the first time, um, what we do is basically we have to mute everyone. And then uh, we're going to do our meditation. Later on, I'll talk. And then if you have any questions, either write it on the chat box or wave at me. And if I, uh, I can unmute you and we can talk about uh, your question or whatever comes up for you. For the moment, just simply divert your attention inwards towards yourself. To make it simple, you are alive and you're here right now. So you simply become aware of your breathing, become aware of your presence, that you are here without trying to project yourself in a better you somewhere else, somebody else, simply yourself here and now right now and acknowledge your being acknowledge yourself in here and now by bringing your attention inwards by disconnecting from the world outside Disconnecting from your thinking mind. And whatever emotions come and go, you simply take your attention away from it and bring your attention to yourself, the presence, the one who's here, the one who's breathing, the one who is aware of everything. And you just simply diverting your attention inwards. And you're spending time by yourself. Acknowledging your presence, the presence. And this should be effortless. If you're putting an effort into it to make it happen, then something's wrong. It should be effortless without really trying to make anything happen. A forced meditation is of no value. As you bring your attention inwards, you may want to put your hands on your heart area, your chest area. That's simply for bringing our attention to this section. Some say this is the seat of the soul. 
the heart chakra. So you have your hands on your chest area and you're feeling yourself in this moment. I would like you to not buy in into judging yourself. Your mind will come and give you all kinds of problems and excuses. Don't listen to it. Don't entertain those thoughts. Simply hang out with your own being the majestic being that you are. Recognize your breath, your presence, that you're alive, you're here. And here is the only place to be. And feel the love which is present. Feel the love that is here in the absence of thinking mind. You are quiet and you feel the bliss. You feel the presence. The presence of who you are. And go ahead, tell yourself that, tell yourself, I love myself. I love myself. And in this moment, without any stories, simply love yourself and accept yourself for who you are, as you are in this moment. Not an alternate self, but yourself right now, the way you are, however you are. You're beautiful the way you are. There's beauty in being authentic. not trying to be something else. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. And you really mean it when you say it. Because there are no stories. Because your true presence is enormous and it's beautiful. And you get a glimpse of yourself when you're quiet. You get to touch yourself, to taste yourself, your true identity beyond the thinking mind. by bringing your attention inwards 
You give your ch yourself a chance to discover the kingdom of heaven within yourself. The kingdom of heaven within yourself. The way you are right now. Not that if you lose more weight. Not that if you are prettier. Not that if you find your partner of life. Not that if you make more money. Not that if things go your way. It's not depending on circumstances. If the weather is good, if the pandemic is gone, and the list goes on and on. You, right now, in this moment, the way you are. Right now, the way you are is perfect. Don't try to make any changes in this moment. Nothing needs to be changed. It's only your perception that needs to be changed. The idea that something is wrong and you have to change yourself. That's the only thing which is wrong. As you're hanging out by yourself, you can feel the presence as if something's growing. It's like an energy field starts to get expanded of feeling a presence around you that its presence getting stronger. Or you may be feeling like you're sinking in, you go deeper into yourself. Maybe you feel like you're going deep into the ocean or deep into the space. You may be hearing the sound of the mind, but you're not involved with it. You feel far, far away from the sounds. Could be anything.
just be available right now here without judging yourself. No matter what is going on, know that you are the one who witnesses and is aware of what is going on. But you don't have to be involved with it. You can maintain your position of simply being aware, but not involved. Aware, but not involved. I love myself. The holy self. The presence. The presence of the being. The same being that we're all sharing in the same time. Drink from this fountain of love, of the being, of the presence, of the peace that you feel. Drink from it. If you feel peaceful and love, know that this is coming from yourself. You are the source of it. You're the one who is in the center of this peace and love. So, in order to reach it, all you have to do is be quiet and bring your intention, tension inwards to yourself.
Bring your attention to this beautiful place, quiet, peaceful. It's the kingdom of heaven that you can only find within yourself here, right now. inside yourself. So why look for it anywhere else when you're the one who carries it? And as you're spending time by yourself, away from your thoughts, you begin to feel this expansion, this expansion is opposite of your limitations. You may lose senses of the boundaries of your body. Your body may appear numb or disappears. You may not even feel it. You know you're here, but you're not anything. You're not the chair, your body, the computer, the temperature, yet you become all of it. Hang out with your being in this presence. Just spend a little bit of time with yourself. We spend a lot of our times putting our attention on the utter world and very little attention to our holy self. So let's 
spend a little bit of time with your divine self. Check out its beauty, its qualities. Look what it brings you. It brings you peace, harmony, balance. Why would you want to take your attention away from it? Why wouldn't you want to be in heaven if you can? Why would you want to be in hell? Why suffer when you can be free? Slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. So much talk and discussions and theories about fifth dimension or other dimension or higher level of consciousness. We've all been reading about it, talking about it, fantasizing about it. putting our time and energy into reaching a higher level of consciousness. And most of us are sacrificing arriving at this higher level of consciousness, sacrificing now, here, for something else which is projected into the future. It's almost you, as if you need to be smacked in the head, break a leg, go through major heartbreak, have your country invaded, lose your home, have your lover leave you, have someone close to you die, lose your home, be diagnosed by a deadly disease. It's almost like you have to get something like this to wake up. You know, a big smack in the head to wake you up, to pay attention to what's already here that you possess. And we're hypnotized so deeply 
so sleepy that we keep running after something outside of here, somewhere else, with somebody else, maybe in India, maybe in Nepal, maybe in Tibet. In a future time, we attach whatever we can to it to postpone it to another time, date, location, where it's already here right now. It's here right now within yourself right now in this moment. And then as I said, it seems like you need to be smack in your head to wake up like something hits you that you wake up and you realize that it's here actually right now it's here. You carry it. But you're so addicted to your mind and your stories. Because when I talk to you, you have to tell me about these stories of how much of a hardship you've had, how much bad things have happened to you. You carry your stories. I can see it on your face. Your shoulders are so tight. You're so serious. This whole thing seems so serious. And you always have these excuses that you can't be here now and feel it because of this and because of that and because of what happened to you and because what is going on and you're going through divorce and your kids are taken away from you being or blah, 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 blah. And the only person you're fooling is yourself. And you keep saying that I really want to awaken, but you do everything possible to avoid it. And I don't understand you. Because you have to be really addicted to suffering. You have to have a major addiction, like a big drug addiction or sugar addiction to your story, your story. You're so addicted to it. You can't let it go. You have to carry this plastic bag, which is full of garbage with yourself wherever you go, because you can't let go of this story. And you can't really take a look at who you really are. All you have to do is stop for a few moments Stop the madness, this craziness that is going in your head. And you stop. And you take your attention from the other world and you bring your attention to the inner world. And you be quiet. And then all of the sudden you gives yourself a chance to encounter the presence of yourself, the holy self, the Atma. The Buddha. And entering into this garden of love, entering into this kingdom of heaven that Christ has spoken about. 
but it's nothing some it's not somewhere else even in your shift in your ascension to fifth dimension the consciousness shifts it's all happening internally it's a shift of your perception it's a shift of your focus of where you are focusing on it shifts and your attention goes inwards towards peace because you're not involved with your thinking mind you've gone beyond the monkey mind and i'm not talking about working mind i'm not talking about if you need to think about how to make a reservation for a train or a plane or you're planning on what to make for lunch or dinner for your kids i'm not talking about that that is practical mind but i'm talking about your story and the world story and how cruel the world is and how much you suffer because you're lonely and no one understands you or what has happened to your past and what is happening in the world and how important that is and how much people are suffering or animals are being killed or they're slaughtering them and they're destroying the land you're so occupied with these things which you basically can't do anything about because you don't know your power so you're trying to fix things with your mind and all you do is suffer and all you do is collect people who are confirming the same story so it's going to be a bunch of blind people leading other blind people but we need somebody here to just stop and say you know what let me be quiet let me just go beyond all of this and bring my attention inwards let me take a look at who i am not who i think i am not the identity that i've been given my name my career my parents my religion that it's been given to me i want to look at something deeper Why do I feel so good when I meditate? Why do I feel so good when I'm with my teacher? Why do I feel so good when I go to satsang? And I'm in the association of the monks on the path of the lovers of bliss god. When we come together when we in Ore Sweden in the retreat in summer and we come together why is it so juicy why is it so much fun we spend 6 to 8 hours a day of doing hardcore work but why is it so fun why does it fly by so fast why do we love it why do we become little kids from an 18 year old to an 84 year old we're all become little kids and we can't get enough and we have so much fun together and we dance and we jump up and down and we cry together and we give each other so many hugs and tell each other how much we love us each other why is that Why is it so much fun? That's because you are able to let go of your story 
and you get a glimpse of your being, the presence, your beautiful being, the love which is here, the love that wants to just burst through you and take over the world because your story is not here. Your mind quiets down. And the child inside you comes out because you carry this child. Playful child wants to play and have fun and dance and sing. Do you ever pay attention? Do you ever come outside of yourself and look at yourself from the outside? Do you ever put this time? Walk outside of yourself and look at yourself. And this time, I want you to be a little bit judging. I want you to judge yourself. Come outside of yourself and look at this person and look at him objectively. Look at him as if you're really put this person under microscope and you're making judgments. And pay attention and look and see how much this person is stuck into their story, stuck into the world story, stuck into the fears and worries and anxieties. Or ego tripping on a being a phony holy. Pay attention. Are you pretending to be holy and meditative and it's fake or it's real? What about your story? Is it real? How much of it is real? Do you feel a shift of just spending time by yourself without your story? Without whatever story, you put your story away and you're here right now and you have nowhere to escape to because you're committed to this. And what comes out of it? Do you think, do you really believe in these fairy tale stories that there is something such as heaven or hell? The little stories they told us when we were kids of heaven and hell. Don't you think hell is here and there are people who live in it right now? And heaven is here. And you can easily be living in it if you're open to it. Which one would you like? Which one do you choose? Anybody? You want to live in heaven or you want to live in hell? Which one do you want? Heaven or hell? Heaven, right hand. Anybody wants to live in heaven? And anybody who wants to live in hell? No one's raising their hand. Nobody wants to live in hell? Great, I'm happy to hear that. So if you don't want to live in hell, then drop your story. 
Drop your own story and drop the world's story. And disconnect from both right now in this moment. Make a decision that from now on, from this moment on, I am going to be disinterested in my own story as well as the world's story. I'm not interested in either of them. They're both bullshit. Can you do that? Number one, your own story. Just tell yourself it's all bullshit. It's all lies. None of it is real. And I'm not interested in it anymore. And I'm going to let it go. I don't want to hear it any longer. And the world story. Whatever the world story is, it doesn't matter how real it appears to be. Can you let that one go too? And be selfish. Practice being selfish. And bring your attention here. And decide on spending time by the Holy Self, your own self, your lover. You found your lover. You know when you find your soulmate, your twin flame, somebody that you're really crazy for? And then, you know, your parents or your family invites you to dinner or or you're supposed to go to work or you're supposed to be meeting somebody, but you only want to be with your lover and you come up with any kind of excuses to make time to go be with your lover. Whatever excuses you have to come up with, you do that. You met someone, you're really crazy about them. There's this hot, passionate love or uh, sexual energy or whatever is really happening between you and this other person. And now you're coming up with all kinds of excuses. You lie to everybody to just go be with your lover. You lie to your kids, to your parents, to your partner, to anyone. You do whatever you have to do because you just want to be with your partner. And any extra time you have, you put it into being with them or writing to them or sending them text message or sending them emojis or emails or, or, or thinking about buying something for them or... When you see them, what you tell them, all you're thinking is to spend time with your lover and you will do anything to create time for for that person. Have you ever been there? Have you ever done that? Because if you never experienced that in your life, I have to say I'm sorry for you. You probably wasted your life. And if you have never had it with another person, then guess what? I have good news for you. Because you can have that with yourself. So imagine you're in that situation for a moment. And you discovered the love of your life but this one is not conditional you don't have to lose weight you don't have to be younger you don't have to be rich you don't have to lie to your husband or wife or parents or kids or your boss to get away from them to go be with the self she's already built inside so you can be with it 
all the time, every moment, completely in love, completely in this passionate, juicy relationship. It's unconditional because this one doesn't care if you're ugly or pretty or you woke up in the morning and your head hair is messy or you haven't brushed your teeth or you haven't put your nice sexy clothes on this one doesn't care about any of them it loves you regardless and it's crazy about you regardless and it's seen you at your worst and it's seen you at your best so you don't have to worry about conditions all you have to do is pay attention Pay attention. That's all you have to do. Acknowledge it. Notice it, that it's here. So now you've found your twin flame. You've found your lover that you're so passionate about. So what do you do when you find your lover that you're very passionate about? What do you do with them? You hug him. You kiss him. You make love with him. You spend every single moment that you're alive and you're awake with them that's what you do how much time have we all spent in our lives, I'll go first. Looking for a partner, looking for a lover, whether you're on social media or your dating sites or looking around, going to a party, going to a dinner, going to for a drink, going to the mall, going to school, whatever, to find your lover. To find the one, your partner. How much time in your life you've spent looking for your partner, looking for the one, the one. Whether it's the same sex as you are or it's opposite sex, I don't care. How much time in your life have you spent looking for the one? And did you find it? And when you did find it, how long did that last? So I'm telling you, the one you're looking for is right here. And it's always with you. And it's dying to meet you. And it's dying to be discovered. It's just so impatient. Impatiently waiting for you to notice it. She, he is here right now waiting to be discovered. And once you get a glimpse of it and you pay attention, this one is going to make you happy forever. It's going to give you a lot of juice. It's going to give you the love you're looking for, the bliss you're looking for. That heaven, that the kingdom is right here. One moment, excuse me. My Instagram stopped, so I need to post this. Okay.
you are who you're looking for. The one you're looking for and you're listening to me, you're reading books, you're watching videos, you go to seminars, workshops and everything. The one you're looking for is the one you're looking from. The one you're looking for is the one you're looking from. It's already here. But you can't know yourself or feel the presence of Her Majesty the Supreme if you are involved into the world of the thoughts and there is any kind of conceptual understanding you're trying to intellectually understand the nature of the being, of the self, and you're trying to use your mind to get it, well, it doesn't happen. So you have to go beyond the mind into the silence, being quiet and being present, being here and not involved. Then the being reveal itself. Actually, it is your being that has brought you here to this broadcast right now. Something much bigger, greater than you and I is at work. And something wants to fall in love with itself. Something wants to reveal itself to itself. It's called the mystery. And the mystery has brought us all here at this pivotal point in our lives to this place. So this is your new reality. Get used to it. And the more you dive into it, the more you drop your resistance, the more you're willing to be with the presence, the more the presence reveals its magic in every moment of your life. Literally, miracle starts to happen. Literally, magic will appear in your life. You will see synchronicities of things aligning with each other. You may think of anything you need and then all of a sudden it appears on your way things show up things align you need money money appears in your life you need help help appears in your life whatever you need appears in your life you're not manifesting it don't take me wrong you're not using the power of an individual to manifest things. In fact, you're simply surrendered to what is. You're surrendered to presence in this moment right now. And you're not trying to manipulate anything. You're not trying to make anything happen. You're actually kicking back and just simply sitting and not trying. And you're spending time with your being. And since your being is greater than anything else, your being knows what you need. So your needs are being met. Things you need appear to you because you're spending time with your being. You're surrendering to your being. You are falling in love with the presence. And now, this is not a narcissistic way. I'm not talking about that. You're not saying me, me, me. You're simply quiet. You don't have a story. You're just here. Not involved with anything. So you stop. And you're here. And then the bliss, the juice, the being, the love begin to show itself. And all kinds of magic happens. Sometimes you may be healing people. All of a sudden, you may be channeling things. You may become psychic. You have intuitive knowing. All kinds of different things can happen. But again, that's not even the goal. You're not even looking for that. Those are side dishes. It's not the main 
objective. The main objective is for us to stop, to deactivate the thinking mind, and to have a journey from the head to the heart to recognize the presence, to recognize the holy self, to recognize the Christ consciousness here inside yourself and to recognize the kingdom of heaven that you have access to and you live in it when there is no mind and it's blissful and it's centered and it's quiet and it's love. And on top of everything else, this is the good news. You don't really have to do anything to get it. That's the beauty of it. I mean, it can't be that it's such a deal. All you have to do, you don't need to do any action to recognize what you already have inside you. You just have to stop. What do you stop? You stop the craziness, the madness. At first, it may feel a little bit weird because that's what you've done all your life. You've been crazy and you've been paying attention to craziness and your focus is on craziness because you watch the news and you listen to this and that and blah, 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 or you listen to your own mind. So you're used to craziness. So silence is weird in the beginning. What do you mean be quiet, be silent, be still, don't do anything? So we have to unclutch from an old programming that's not serving you. All it does, it brings misery, brings, brings misery to you. So you have to unclutch from that, stop, and then in that transition, when you stop, all of a sudden, the being reveals itself. So the reason that you don't experience it on daily, every moment, and, and you don't feel it all the time, and you still think it's conditional, you still think you have to go and come and, for example, sit with me, to feel it, or you have to go sit with Eckhart Tolle, or you have to go see with Maharishi, or you have to go be with this shaman from here or there to feel it, it's still a hang up in your head. It's still a false identification that your mind is projecting that you need an external person in order for you to feel the presence which is within yourself. But it's okay, I, don't, I love it when we sit together and I'm happy to reflect this back to you, but I'm honestly 100% truthfully telling you that I'm not the one who's giving it to you. You're already feeling yourself. You're the one who's giving it to yourself. I'm just a mirror here. I'm mirroring it to you. That's all. You are the Buddha. But you're so conditioned because you think it's outside. So you're looking for it continuously. I've done this too for 30 years of being a spiritual seeker and seeking and going to all these different gurus with my begging bowl and hoping they throw a bone in it or they throw a coin in it. So I was projecting it that it comes from Guruji till I realized it doesn't come from anywhere. It's here already. All I have to do is stop, stop the madness and just hang out with myself 
and be quiet. Whatever that is, go to the nature, go by the ocean, go for a drive, make love to someone you like, whatever, just be quiet. Just get out of this one and sink in your heart. Whatever that is gonna take you there. And if it's good to you, it's good for you. Whatever method you can find in the beginning to recognize yourself, to recognize your own being, use that method. But then eventually you go beyond the method because you don't need anything. You simply need to be quiet. That's all you have to do. Quiet and disengaged. Dispassionate at this stage, completely dispassionate with the world. Like you don't give a shit about the world. You absolutely do not give a shit about what is going on in the world. And you absolutely don't give a shit about what's going on in your head. You give both of them up. That's why I say you need to be selfish. And you just hang out here. Then the bliss starts to happen. And you begin to see that you're in the kingdom of heaven. And as that process takes place, your vibration starts to change because you're vibrating from a higher frequency because you're not involved with the world of thoughts. And then you're useful. Then you're helping your fellow humans if you want to help anybody because your presence is emanating light and love. Then you're good for something. Prior to that, you're not good for anything because you can't help anybody. You can't really help other people and be of service to God if you're not quiet. If you're busy stuck in your head and you're busy with the world, you're of no use to God. You're just another robot like 7 billion robots running around. So you want to be of service to God, then discover God inside yourself and live that. Then you're of service to God. Then you're good for something. Learn not to suffer and find the true joy inside yourself. And your joy is content contagious because other people are gonna catch it from you. They can't avoid it. The love you discover within yourself is contagious. You cannot contain it in yourself because other people catch it from you. Even if you don't say a word, you have discovered God and the kingdom of heaven within your own heart. And there's joy in you. You can't stop smiling. There's just this light is pouring out of you. And anybody who comes to your field, they get contracted. Just like if you're having a flu, I'm not talking about coronavirus, so don't panic. You have a flu or you have a cold and you're hanging out with a few people very close to you and you're sneezing and you're in a room and you're talking and they're going to they're gonna catch, most probably catch this cold from you or the flu from you because it's contagious. Same thing when you discover love within yourself and you're feeling this love in your heart on moment to moment in life, then people around you can't help it by, but catching it. They catch it from you. That's how you serve humanity. You don't serve humanity by getting angry and going out there and start yelling and screaming and breaking windows and 
complaining about this and that because you haven't found peace within yourself. If you don't find peace inside yourself, you cannot emanate peace in the world. You have to discover it within to be effective. Am I making any sense? Are you with me or I hypnotized you and you fell asleep? Are you awake? Good, I'm happy to know that. No, I haven't hypnotized you yet. <laughs> Hi, Karen. I'm trying to unmute you. Hello, Hi. hello. Hi, nice to see you. Where are you? Likewise, uh, I'm uh, a very nice place around, close right. where I live. Yeah. Right. It's it's bright and shiny, so it's the uh, uh, the sun is up, right? And it's late, isn't it? Mid yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mid I'm, mid I'm by the water, and the sun is uh, a little bit low. Okay. Yeah. Well, nice seeing you. Likewise. Hi, uh, Ta Tahia. Hiya. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Where are you from? In Costa Rica. Oh, you're from, okay. Well, where in Costa Rica? It's uh, Alajuela. Okay. Alajuela, Costa Rica. This is my first time, and thank you very much. It's beautiful. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> welcome. Mm -hmm. Welcome. I've been, you I've been awake you, all the time. <laughs> you, you've been awake all the time? I'm I'm happy to hear that. We need that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody has any questions? You can wave at me or you can write on the chat box. Telen no Terrilyn. Hi. Terrilyn. Like Carolyn, but with a T, Terrilyn. Hi, Terrilyn. Hi. And, and where are you from? I live in Marina Del Rey. Okay, so we're neighbors. I live in, in Detroit, Michigan, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, welcome. Yeah. Thank is you. This, is this your first time? No, no, it's not my first time. I've been logging on, but um, I, I, went to your seminar at the gateway portal on Venice. Okay. And right. then, and then I joined you online. Yes. Okay. Great. I love those weekly, your weekly words of wisdom. Really, you know, they pack a punch of truth and, and you just, it's the truth. And so you just settle in with it and, embrace it but thank you i'm very grateful to have found you yeah very grateful yeah you're welcome you're very welcome but it is the truth because when you kept saying searching 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 for your lover and i remember doing that and then finally i had my own my own intimacy with the presence and as you said, it is magical. It's it's delightful, and all my needs are met. And you know, financial and health and everything is taken care of. And I finally can relax and just relax and not be stressed trying to figure out how I'm going to maneuver through life. And so I'm I'm very grateful the presence just drew me in however you want to describe it just kept knocking on my door and however you know i'm just i'm blessed i'm very grateful and so that intimacy so i'm just always kind of waiting for the next surprise of how this presence is going to guide me and take care of me and, and use me to help other people who are suffering you know use me to help them and whatever way so i'm 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 blessed because i was searching like you say a long time for that 
one person. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh my God! Right. And so right. I'm grateful. It's it's grace. It is grace. It's it, the it, grace of yeah. it's the grace of God, and I don't know why, but I'm just thankful. And now, however I can serve, I'm like thank you, God, for delivering me from my own mind chatter, my own and sad and in my own anxiety thank you god for helping me to just deliver me from me <laughs> a amen yes i hope i feel i feel the same way uh okay let me carolyn right yes like carolyn oh, with, with the t uh, carolyn yes and uh i feel exactly the same way my sister and it was grace grace only because I don't know what I've done to deserve what I have, okay? Honestly, truthfully, I mean, people can say a lot of different things that you do this, you do that. But personally, I don't remember that I did anything good in a past life or whatever, but the grace came and gave me all these things. Of course, there's been suffering and struggle, but it was all needed to come to this point of gratitude and acceptance. So we are all lucky that Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, revealed itself to us in this way. And we have found each other and we have found this platform for the moment. Everything is in this moment. And right now, through the grace of God, we're able to transmit and share this love with each other. We don't know how long this is going to last, if this is going to continue or not. So we don't even take this for granted. It may not last long who knows what's going to happen but right now which is the only moment we have that we're together this transmission this message is getting communicated in a mystical and magical way and no one can take credit for it because it does come from nowhere. But it's here. This message has been around for thousands of years. This teaching is nothing new. Its packaging is changed. But the presence God, love, it's always been here. There have been many, many different teachers, messengers, gurus that have come on this planet and they have transmitted and shared the wisdom and it's continuously happening. It's coming from many different sources constantly. We're constantly being bombarded by love. It's everywhere. It's just whether our focus goes in that direction or not. Quite often our focus is on the negative and limitation. But when we bring our focus inwards, we shift our attention inwards and we take a few moments and we stop. We stop everything. Because it does require a disengagement with everything that is happening, both internally and externally. It does require disengagement. So we stop, we pause, we take a deep breath, and we're here and we're paying attention to this girl here, to this guy here. 
and then it reveals itself. It gives you the goodies. It gives you the diamonds. And as my sister Turlin mentioned, the more you relax into it, the less of an anxiety, fear, worry that you need to make it happen. You don't need to make anything happen. Because mama, she's the one who provides. Papa is the one who provides. It's her majesty. It's the supreme being that is providing for us. It's feeding us. Puts lunch, dinner, food on the table. It puts money in your account. It takes your kids to school and bring them safely home. It does all the work. You can just relax into that and see it. And in that, you harmonize. You surrender, you accept what is, and you harmonize into it. And that doesn't mean, don't take me wrong, that everything is going to be preaches and cream all the time, and things have to go your way all the time. No, they don't necessarily go your way, but you're surrendered to what is. You're in acceptance of what is. So even if something doesn't go your way, an accident happened, something unfortunate happened, you don't lose your composure. You don't all of a sudden come out and say, this is all bullshit, God doesn't exist, presence is not here because things didn't go my way and I had an accident or catastrophe happen in my life. I thought that I'm in harmony with life. You are in harmony with life. Being in harmony in life doesn't mean things have to go your way. Being in harmony with life means you are surrendered to whatever it happens. That's being in harmony with life. And you know who you are. You recognize who you are. You recognize you have God in you. Look, when people say that you know who you are, excuse me, when you, when we talk about recognition of who you are, maybe it's a loaded uh, statement. Maybe you're expecting, your mind is expecting that I need to discover that I am this incredible shaman or healer or this high being that I'm always feeling really high. And I, I'm not referring to always feeling high because you have a human body and human body goes up and down. I'm not referring to that, to always feeling high. It's not about high. The recognition of who you are is that you have come in touch with your being. Quiet here. And you feel the magnetic electrical field of presence around you. You know that. You feel it. You don't have to be smiling all the time or be in a meditative, blissful state that you're one with universe. No, you're still doing action. You're driving to work. Let's say you work for Amazon Prime. You're, you're a truck driver. You still have to drive six hours, eight hours a day. 
And that's, you know, you're still doing your work. You're a policeman. You're a nurse. You're a construction worker. You're a bus driver. You're an engineer. You're a computer specialist. You still go to work and you work and you're engaged with working. So when you're doing the work, there's contraction, there's issues. Sometimes you're dealing with things. That doesn't mean every moment you have to feel blissed out. Don't mistake what I'm pointing out to with a state of being really high all the time. That's not what it is. That's what a lot of spiritual seekers are making a mistake because they think that you have to be feeling like this all the time. That's another feeling that comes and goes. You're feeling high, you're feeling low. What I'm relating, re referring to is the recognition of the presence that is here. You recognize it. It's a permanent space. This doesn't come and go. It's not a feeling. You're not going to feel high and feel low. This is constant. You recognize that. That is here all the time. And it doesn't come and it doesn't go. In that recognition of the presence which is here, settling down in the kingdom of heaven is where you discover a continuity which is here of the being. And the bliss you feel from it, it's a low dosage. It's a low volume electrical dosage. It's just like small voltage but it's continuously sends this bliss signals continuously. It's very, very low dosage, but it's constant. It doesn't spike up and down. It's not a feeling. It's not a state. Are you honest? Do you understand what I'm saying? Make Please pay attention. I want to explain this part again. Please pay attention. Most of us are on spiritual path, me included. I was there. I made this mistake. I made this wrong identification. I would go sit with the master, with Punjaji, with Robert Adams, with other teachers, with Amaji. I would, was in John of God, sitting in the Casa, whatever, wherever I was, whatever teacher, master, shaman, healer situation. And you get really high. You get like really, like you come to the God, Godhead. You get really, really like expanded and amazingly dissolved into the oneness but then you come back into the world and the mind comes and quite often it comes much stronger and you get these mind bombardments so you are up here and you sink down i'm not talking a feeling i'm not talking a state States could be manipulated, especially you can do meditation or you can go be running for a long time or you can smoke a joint or have a glass of wine or have some good sex and all of a sudden you feel good. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something deeper inside, which is steady. It's steady. It's not a feeling. It doesn't come and go. It's, it's not a state. It's a presence, which is here. And you recognize that by bringing your attention towards it. 
and you recognize the presence which is constant and it's always here. And you recognize that when you become quiet, you have to become quiet. That's a requirement of it. It's a 100% requirement that you need to be quiet. So you get quiet and you feel the presence. And this presence is not conditional. It doesn't come and go, it's always here. So the more you recognize it, the more you understand that you are this. The more you understand that you are this presence, that's your true identity. So that becomes the foundation of your movements. Now anything on top of it is gravy. But you notice it. You, your attention comes to it. And it's here. It's subtle, but it's here. We're coming to the end of the academy. Uh, our next academy is going to be on uh, next Wednesday. So um, I'm having two events. I have a shamanic healing circle tomorrow. Uh, it's a two hour event and uh, you can register if you would like. Uh, you need to go on my website, zaratustra.tv and then go to the calendar uh, part and click on the event. Shamanic healing circle. We're gonna do some shamanic healing. I haven't done one for I think three months. So I think I was, we were, I was due to do one. Uh, and then over the weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday, uh, from nine to one, I believe that's the time. Is that right, Hilde? You, you, know, you know the hours from one to one, nine to one, two days. It's going to be Ascension to Fifth Dimension Workshop. And in this workshop, uh, my goal is to help you and give you the tools and methods of A, showing you how to raise your vibrations to a higher frequency. B is helping you to shift from this identification with a body and a person who's experiencing separation all the time. The sense of separation which 
is inside us, that we're separated from everything else, is I'm going to help you to pop out of it. So you can come into this place of oneness and experience it and learn how you can do it on your own. So fifth dimension that we speak about is not a place on a geographical map or it's not somewhere outside of here. It's not somewhere you have to go to. It's something which is already here. And it's something that your higher self is, resides in fifth dimension. All your intuitive knowing is coming from your higher self. It comes from your fifth dimensional self. So fifth dimension is a shift in your perception. It's when your perception shifts and your perception from an ego-based, individual ego-based, based on separation, shift into the recognition of the oneness, the recognition that there is no separation. In fact, let's say, for example, I'm going to use, okay, so this is my book. So let's say we're all, all of us together right now, we are parts of this book. We're pages of this book. Every human being, everything is a page in this book. So, so it's one book. There is no separation. So page, let's say, 78 cannot go in conflict with page 79. They're all parts of this book. So when awakening happens, when you're, you go into an expansion of recognizing yourself, what happens is you begin to see and notice that everybody that you're looking at, whether they're good or bad, they're pretty or they're ugly, they're big or small, small. They're tall or short. They're sweet or they're bitter. They're dangerous or they're safe. They're sweethearts or they're assholes. You begin to see that there are yourself. They're part of you. They're different pages of you. It's yourself. Because nothing separated from anything. It's your own self that you're discovering. So in this exploration of recognizing yourself in all and all in you, what happens is a, your self-judgment begins to fall and also judging others begin to disappear because you recognize that it's one being appears to be many. It's one being wearing all these masks. You pull this mask out, you look inside and you just find God. And you walk into anyone else and pull their mask. No matter how evilish that person is. No matter how much of an asshole they are. You pull their mask. And you see behind the mask. The same lady. The same being. Which is behind this mask. It's the same one. That appears as many the one that appears as many. There's only one. There has never ever been another one. 
and the seven billion people you see around the world, they're all expressions of the same one. There's only one of us here right now. I am talking to myself. I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at different faces of myself. How many different faces and forms that I have? I'm looking at that. Whether I like the form and the face and the behavior, the smell of the, the one I'm looking at, or I don't. They're all myself. So in that recognition, fear disappears. And freedom replaces it. So if you're interested in Ascension to Fifth Dimension Workshop, I welcome you to join us. Uh, we start on Saturday. Uh, it's going to be this coming Saturday and Sunday. And the Shamanic Healing uh, Circle is tomorrow. So go to my uh, website, zaratustra.tv, and uh, you get all the information you need. They were also posted it on Facebook and we have Facebook uh, event pages that you can go and take a look and get the information. Uh, my email is uh, info at zaratustra.tv. Uh, feel free, free if you want to uh, send us any comments. If you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to us. My uh, This video is uh, of this broadcast today is going to be uh, posted uh, on YouTube, on Facebook, and we also, those of you who sign up with us through the Zoom, we will send you a copy of this uh, video uh, in a few days. But if you go on my YouTube channel, Zaratustra 5D, if you want to subscribe to it, and there's hundreds of previous videos that we have recorded and we have uh, published them uh, for, for you to look at. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's been an honor to be at your presence once again. God bless you and I look forward to seeing you soon. Namaste.